I'm here with David Wasserman of the Cook Political Report and an NBC News contributor. David, thanks for joining us. You're here in Pennsylvania. Why has Pennsylvania moved to the center of the political universe this, this cycle? Well, Pennsylvania was the center of the political universe in 2016, but Democrats weren't willing to admit it. Uh, and it, it was really uh, under the radar for a lot of the 2016 cycle, but ended up being decisive because it is a mix of suburban counties that are moving towards Democrats, uh, a lot of Appalachian counties uh, with coal mining heritages that have moved towards Republicans and moved towards Donald Trump uh, by uh, a large uh, difference in 2016. So this time around, Democrats aren't about to make the same mistake of bypassing Pennsylvania's smaller media markets in favor of Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Joe Biden is barnstorming the state and has spent plenty of time in places like Gettysburg and Latrobe, not just the major cities. What are some of the ups and downs, the positives and negatives for both of the uh, candidates so far this year within Pennsylvania? Well, we're expecting uh, Joe Biden to do very well in southeastern Pennsylvania, obviously, and it's important that he overperform Hillary Clinton in Chester County, Montgomery County, Bucks County, Delaware County. These, these Philly Collar counties are going to be essential to his victory math, not only because uh, they've become increasingly diverse and college educated, but also because he's considered something of a favorite son uh, among voters who are closer to Delaware and something of a third senator for a long time. So that's key. He's also got to be able to narrow the margins in northeastern Pennsylvania, uh, a place where, uh, where Hillary Clinton uh, unexpectedly got clobbered in, in 2016. And then uh, Democrats are also hoping to do much better in the western part of the state as well. And uh, we're likely to see uh, Joe Biden win Allegheny County by a larger margin than Hillary Clinton did. And uh, Biden is also hoping to flip back the ultimate Pennsylvania bellwether, Erie County, which flipped red in 2016. So it's a game of margins. And this is really going to come down to whether Donald Trump can bring out an exorbitant number of whites without college degrees who did not cast ballots in 2016. Because we are seeing defections for Trump among seniors and women. And for every voter who defects from Trump 2016 to Biden 2020, Trump is going to need to bring out two new voters to offset that. What counties should we be looking at on election night? Well, Philly and, and Pittsburgh steal the spotlight a lot of the time, but the real battle for Pennsylvania is going to t be taking place in a variety of smaller metro areas as well. And the Harrisburg region is a place that has become more suburban and has seen some Democratic vote growth in the past few years. Uh, there's a competitive congressional race underway there. What I've been watching carefully is the polling in a number of Pennsylvania's closest district races at the congressional level because that tells us a lot about what the parties are thinking and where they're spending money. It is pretty telling that uh, Republicans haven't made a large investment in the seat that covers Scranton, the 8th congressional district. We were expecting that to be a place where Donald Trump's numbers were better at this point in the election, and the parties see Joe Biden doing relatively well there. The Lehigh Valley district, the 7th district, Susan Wild, that's a place where Hillary Clinton won by one or two points in 2016. Now, uh, several polls have shown Joe Biden with a double digit lead there. The Harrisburg district, the 10th district, uh, Donald Trump carried that district by nine points in 2016. Today, there are several polls that show Joe Biden ahead there. And Connor Lamb's district, the 17th in the Allegheny County suburbs and Beaver County. Uh, Donald Trump carried that district by three points in 2016. Now we're seeing polls that show Joe Biden ahead somewhere in the high single or low double digits. So Donald Trump has to be able to make this up somewhere else in the state, and the math just doesn't add up. So what's cool with, about chatting elections with a guy like Wasserman is you can really wonk out on the numbers and get deep into them. Uh, he knows what turnout looks like all the way down to the district level. Uh, how did Trump do in Luzerne County back in 2016? Uh, how have the de demographics changed in Berks County since then? So really, um, this, this election takes it all into a new territory, though. So the reason really is mail-in ballots. Uh, why, are they, why are they changing things up so much? Uh, let's, let's talk to Washington again about mail-in ballots now. 
Mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania. How large of a lead does Donald Trump have to have on election night or into the early hours for it not to be overtaken by uh, former Vice President Joe Biden? O'Brien, well, this election is unprecedented in so many ways, and one of them is this massive shift towards absentee ballots, and most Pennsylvania voters have not voted by mail before. So this is going to be new for election administrators in terms of the counting process, the quantity of ballots they're handling, and some counties are not going to be reporting absentee results until the morning uh, after the election. And so we don't have a clear idea of what kind of lead Donald Trump needs to build on election night in order to be with, able to withstand the subsequent counting of absentee ballots, which, is, which we expect to favor Biden. Uh, one piece of advice I would give is to look for counties that have completed their vote tallies. They may not be particularly large counties, but if a county is nearly done uh, counting their ballots, it's a good idea to compare what the percentage margins are uh, in 2020 versus what they were in 2016. After all, in 2016, the presidential race in Pennsylvania was decided by 44,292 votes. Uh, that's less than 1%. So it doesn't take much of a shift towards Biden in every county in Pennsylvania to get him across the finish line. You've been tweeting a lot about turnout and how large the turnout has been in just the mail-in and early voting. What do you see in Pennsylvania with uh, the turnout in early voting and what, what might it portend? So we've seen a historically large early vote because of the liberalization of voting laws uh, and even before the pandemic, the steps that were taken uh, to uh, expand access to, to voting prior to election day. And so it's possible that, uh, that, that we'll see uh, a something of a red mirage on, a, on election night where the election day vote heavily favors the president who's been highly critical of mail-in voting and the mail ballots heavily favor Joe Biden. That's going to require us to be extra cautious in determining who's ahead on election night. What would surprise you about Pennsylvania? Well, Pennsylvania surprised a lot of people in 2016, but one thing that we'll be watching is just what does the turnout look like in the T of Pennsylvania? Donald Trump, if he has any chance of defying the polls and winning a second term, he's probably got to win this state. And to do that, he's got to drive an unprecedented turnout in the middle of the state and rural Pennsylvania counties. And one thing to watch is just how many more votes are cast this year in, the, in those counties compared to 2016. If we see a surge of something like 30 or 40%, uh, in some of these places of ballots, that would be a, a pretty good sign if it wasn't also replicated in the bluer counties in Pennsylvania. But keep in mind, um, you know, there were 2.4 million uh, whites without college degrees who did not vote in Pennsylvania in 2016. Donald Trump is trying to bring them out. The problem is that he's not winning that demographic by a high enough share this time to be able to offset some of the gains that Biden has made. Uh, David Wasserman with the Cook Political Report and an NBC News contributor. Thank you so much for, uh, for your time. Thank you.